Hey guys, I'm here, let's get technical. You don't need me to tell you that I'm super psyched and super happy to be doing this video, but why? Well, we'll get to that in just a sec, but let's start off this super fun video with some fun stuff you can do online now, guys. Dong. How good are you at guessing other people's emotions by looking only at their eyes? Well, you can go on over to a site Harvard University created and test to see how good you are. But no matter what you scored, you will always be awesome, because IamAwesome.com says so. If you're ready for an argument, go to the DisagreeingInternet.com, where the internet will always be shaking your head at you. Did that put you down? Well, let's get you in a better mood. Dot com. Uh, the cutest place on the internet, but not the nicest place. To visit the nicest place on the internet, do just that. Go to the nicest place on the internet, dot net. There, you will find unlimited videos of people giving you a hug. Since hugging straight for an hour will burn 70 calories, you may need to get calm. Dot com. In that website, it runs you through a meditation and plays some soothing music. Speaking of music, amplifon.co.uk backslash emotions of sound plays a sound and you can choose how you feel. People who can easily relate sights and sounds, or colors and smells, are called synesthetes, and they have a trait called synesthesia. People with synesthesia can seemingly relate unrelated things, such as the taste of cheese and the color blue, or a person's name and a taste, like John to me tastes like scrambled eggs. Now if you want to learn more about synesthesia, or just want to be amazed, check out What Color is Tuesday by Richard E. Saitoic with Ted Ed. This is a truly amazing video and one of my favorite TED Ed lessons. But before you check that out, let's explain more about why you can just tell I was happy at the beginning of this video. Anyways, if I wanted to answer that question, I would have to talk to my friend Charles. Charles Darwin. Yeah, the famous guy who discovered the theory of evolution. That guy. He also discovered that human emotions such as happy, sad, anger, are all programmed into our DNA, which explains why babies, to some extent, can sense happiness. When I smile, most of the time they smile back. Now not only babies can sense human emotions, but also animals can sense human emotions. A guy named Gregory Burns is a guy who totally changed the world and totally revolutionized science. He was able to put a dog in an MRI. Actually, this is pretty impressive, because before this, the only way humans could tell what animals were thinking is to just look at them. Which isn't very scientific, is it? No. Anyways, what Greg found is that when a dog smelled food or the sound of familiar humans or any other pleasing sense, the part of the brain that was active was the caudic nucleus, which is the same part of the brain in humans responsible for the stuff we like. Now we all love cats and dogs and all of our other pets because they're just so cute. But what is cute scientifically? Well, a good place to start is with us, with young us. Almost all humans can agree with me that babies are cute and that is mainly because they're our offspring. We are programmed to protect, love, and help them succeed. So nature's way of making sure we do that is to tell us those things are so cute. So if we're programmed to think that our offspring are cute, why do we think cute little dogs and kittens are so adorable? It's because they have the same characteristics as our babies have, which is a large head, large eyes, and disproportionate body features, which all cute animals have. A matter of fact, if we apply these features, anything can look cute. Just like this tiny cute hammer. Aww. <sighs> oh man, <sighs> wow. All this talk about emotions is making me tired, but why do we yawn when we are tired? Well, let's get one thing straight. We don't yawn because we are tired. We yawn to literally cool down our brain. When we yawn, we stretch our eardrums and take in cool air, which both decrease the temperature of our brain. This also is the reason our ears pop when we yawn. Okay, so we yawn to cool down our brains. But that's not getting us anywhere. I still don't know why we yawn when we're tired. Well, to answer this, we have to answer another question. Why is our head hot in the first place? Well, sleep deprivation and exhaustion can contribute to the rising temperatures of our brain. And that finally gives us the answer to our question. But I have another question. Why is yawning contagious? Well, the good news is this has a pretty straight cut simple answer. Empathy. We yawn because we are empathetic for the yawner. But who's we? 
Well, we is everyone but A, children under four because they haven't fully developed their empathy yet, or B, children with empathetic disorders such as autism. So the next time you see someone yawn, yawn with them and tell them, hey, I feel you, bro. And get ready, get out, and be awesome. Dun 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 d